Greetings, fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week, I continue my series on the history of Battletech by talking about the Twilight of the Clans. Now, before I can talk about the Twilight of the Clans, I do have to give a brief summary of the Truce Era. The era between th uh, 3052 and 3058. It shouldn't be that big a section, so hopefully this video will not be like last week's. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as I talk about the Twilight of the Clans. A lot of things happened before the Twilight of the Clans really began. Um, I'm just going to go over a quick highlights of them. First, Clan Wolf was a warden clan. Well, they got into a dispute with Clan Jade Falcon. And they were losing badly. So, as his last order, Ulrich Kerensky ordered Phelan uh, Ward formerly Feeling Kel, and later would become Feeling Kel again. It gets complicated. Yeah, let's not get into that. Well, he ordered Feeling Kel to take as many of the wolves as he could to the Inner Sphere. Basically setting them up as refugees from the clans. And the rest of Clan Wolf, and, you know, everyone that didn't come with Phelan, was either died or became bondsmen of the Jade Falcons. Well, this caused an interesting thing because this meant Clan Wolf was essentially absorbed into Jade Falcon. Uh, the clans have a little thing called Trial of Absorption where basically a clan does something bad, they get to um, fight them. If they can win, they're proven right. If they lose, all those clan assets become part of the other clan, including all the warriors, civilians, territory held, etc., etc., so, what ends up happening is a, a really fun example of clan politics. The trial of absorption happened. Vlad Ward. Well, he basically killed one of the Jade Falcon Khans in the middle of the Grand Council. The, the Clan Grand Council. Like, literally beat the guy down and slowly while delivering a speech to the gathered Clan Council crushed the windpipe of Khan Elias Critchell of the Jade Falcons. Previous to that, he'd kind of uh, beaten and killed in the mech battle the other Jade Falcon Khan. This basically meant at this time Vlad Ward was the Saw Khan when he went into the council. And since he was killed the Khan, he became Khan, and thus gained all the rights and privileges of a Clan Khan, including a rarely used ability to, actually it's never been used before, to designate 
all the assets that were formerly Clan Wolf as a new clan. Clan Jade Wolf. Then, once he did that, he used the rights of being a con of now Jade Wolf to rename Clan Jade Wolf to Clan Wolf. Yeah. Complicated mess. Either way, this was a Wolf Clan of Crusaders. This was not the same as the old Warden Clan Wolf. And a lot of people really didn't like that change. Meanwhile, Feel and Kel's group became known as Clan Wolf in Exile. And since Feel and Kel was affiliated with the Kells, he took them to the planet of Ark Royal, where his great uncle, Morgan Kell, was the Archduke. Thus, yeah, presenting a essentially a clan ready to help the Inner Sphere fight the clans. Now, meanwhile, while that's going on, uh, so the Federated Commonwealth, well, the younger sister of the prince, the first prince of it, so Victor Ian Steiner Davian was the first prince of the Federated Commonwealth. His younger sister, Catherine Steiner Davian, Davian, made a choice that she didn't really like her brother having all the spotlight, and she felt he was forsaking his duties by constantly, you know, going around, gallivanting around the inner sphere, courting a, uh, the daughter of the coordinator of the Draconis Combine, that sort of thing. So, she made this crazy decision. She was going to secede the Steiner half of the Federated Commonwealth from the Federated Commonwealth. <clears throat> so, this became known as the Lyran Alliance. Now, there was this whole little area right but kind of joining the two that was created as a result. See, the Davian half called all its regions marches. And you had this area called the Sarna March. Well, what happens when you have an area that has a lot of mix of different troops or different loyalties? Things got complicated. Worlds in that region began changing alliances between the two sides. Merrick and Trikos Combine and Comstar were making moves, taking these. And basically it was just a whole big muddle. And this area became known as the Chaos March because no one knew what was happening. And meanwhile, some stuff was going on with Comstar. Yes, you know, the phone police with mechs. They had a schism. You see, at the end of the clan invasion, right after Fox returned to Terra to talk to the Primus to relay what had happened and proclaim the battle of success, the Primus kind of issued an order that she really shouldn't have. It was a really bad idea for something called Operation Scorpion. 
And basically it was attacks all around the inner sphere trying to basically usher in a situation where Comstar could come in and act as the saviors to the trouble they caused themselves. Well, Fox didn't like that. So he shot the Primus. <clears throat> and immediately started putting out orders for a secularization of Comstar. Well, what happens when you have a religious order that's suddenly being told it needs to go secular? You're going to have the true believers split off. Those true believers fled to the Free Worlds League, where one of their own members was the Captain General. And this group called themselves the Word of Blake. And they basically continued doing what old Comstar would do. Meanwhile, new Comstar was organizing everything in a totally secular way, <clears throat> you know, getting rid of all the rituals, etc., etc. And that was happening. Well, just before things started getting really interesting, the word of Blake seized Terra. It was a sneak attack. They had agents infiltrated into Comstar's mercenaries that Comstar used to help add to their forces. And because it was a surprise attack, no one knew it was coming, they took it fairly quickly. The decision from Fox and the current Primus was we have bigger fish to fry. We need to focus on the clans. Comstar is now headquartered on Tukiyid. Hey, Inner Sphere! We need to reform the Star League! And with that, we finally step into the era that would be called the Twilight of the Clans. So, we're going to gloss over this in the short details. The winning, first winning conference led to the creation of a second Star League. It was meant with the with Comstar as a tie-breaking vote, and it had a number of different political entities actually getting equal representation. The initial grouping was the five great houses and the Free Russell Hug Republic. Plus, as I said, Comstar is the deciding, deciding vote. The First Lord would be elected on a fairly regular cycle. And the first First Lord was, was Theodore Carita. This was important. Because what happened with Theodore Carita was he was given the mission. And he gave the mission to destroy Clan Smoke Jaguar. That is what the Second Star League's opening move was. They put together two task forces. Task Force Serpent was meant to go up the Clan Exodus Road that Comstar had gotten the route for through a traitor in Smoke Jaguars. Meanwhile, Task Force Bulldog was going to attack the forces of the 
clans in the Inner Sphere, specifically Clan Smoke Jaguar. And these all started around 3058-3059, all these events. And it started moving quickly. They spent time getting together the right forces. The best of the best were sent. And forces not just from, you know, the Combine. They got the best from the entire Inner Sphere. The Lyran Royal Guards, the Second Knights of the Inner Sphere from the Free Worlds League. The uh, Sword of Light from the from Combine. Davian Guards from Federated Sons, etc., etc. And over Task Force Serpent, they put the most brilliant mind ever. Or at least the most brilliant raider that they had available. Morgan Hasek Davian. The one who led the Behind Enemy Lines raid to rescue the agent within House Liao during the Fourth Succession War. And from there, they launched. Now, what ended up happening was it took about a year for Task Force Serpent to make it to Huntress, the capital of the Smoke Jaguars. And then it took another year of fighting. Now, the fighting on Huntress was brutal. And it was... They quickly defeated, within about two months, the forces that were actually on Huntress when they arrived. Those weren't the forces that made it brutal. No, the forces that made it brutal and devastating were the returning forces from the Inner Sphere. Because as they were getting their arses kicked, the Smoke Jaguars began retreating. And they went back to Huntress. They went back home as they were driven back. And as they were driven back and arriving, they had time to repair their mechs, to recover their wounds as, during the transit. They knew the route. So they got there quickly. And then they began fighting, trying to retake Huntress. And the battle was vicious. The, the final battle was a case of the forces of the Inner Sphere were running low and running out of ammunition. During the battle, the final leader, Ariana Winston of the Eridani Light Horse, was killed. And just as it looked like they were, the Task Force Serpent was going to be wiped out, broadcasts came that they were relieved. And dropships began coming in from Task Force Bulldog. See, Bulldog was able to rush up the Exodus Road because they weren't having to be sneaky anymore. 
but they still had to take time to supply and get, get all the supply ships together. Otherwise, they would have been right on the heels of the Jaguars who were coming up. And at that moment, Hundress falls. Now, the con of the Smoke Jaguars was on Stranomecti at the time with his honor guard. He was trying to drum up support and reinforcements from the other clans. Well, remember when he uh, leveled Ido on Turtle Bay during the invasion? The clans didn't take kindly to that. And so... They kind of... Well, let's face it. No clan liked the Smoke Jaguars. The Smoke Jaguars had no allies. Simply put. So no one wanted to help them. You have about a month's time of rearm, reequip, resupply, etc. For the forces on Huntress. And then they jump to Stranomecti. And issue a Bachal. Using the clan codes, clan honor system against them. And they issue a Bachal for a trial of refusal against the invasion. The clans end up splitting. And basically a trial of refusal works like this. When it's something voted on, your odds are equal to the odds that voted against you. So in this case, the Warden clan or a number of clans that would eventually become identified as Warden, chose to stay out of the Great Refusal, while the clans who were Crusaders firmly stayed and fought. Now, this meant all the Crusader clans, and I'm not going to go through all of them, fought. This was... A lot more than fought on Tukia. Well, this was more than fought on Tukia. Because you had half of the... Approximately half of the 17 clans. Oh, by the way, the Nova Cats made the decision to fight for the Inner Sphere. Yeah. Because they had visions that told them so. We'll get into that at a later date. But yes. So you had essentially eight clans versus the Inner Sphere forces. Now, om almost every single fight that the Inner Sphere fought, they won. Three exceptions. The Jade Falcons actually beat Comstar. They learned their lessons, they used them well against Comstar. The Star Adders, they fought dirty. They brought conventional infantry not elementals they 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 use combined arms tactics the inner sphere wasn't prepared for how they for a clan fighting the way the inner sphere fights and clan wolf fought 
to a bloody draw. Like, literally, it was... It was such a vicious fight between the two that over the course of it, the com both commanders had their mech shot out from under them. Vlad Ward got his shot out from under him. He ejected. Kai Allard Leo got his shot out from under him. He ejected. They were both sitting on a hillside watching the battle. And then they finally just turned to each other and went, draw, draw. Shook hands. Issued the, you know, used the radios to call their size go, yeah, we're ending the fight. It's a draw. And that that's kind of how that one went. But, yeah, that, that's something I just found amusing. That you had the leader of each force shot out from under their, shot out from their mech, sitting on the hillside next to each other, watching the fight. Saying, oh, well, let's see, he's going to do this, and uh, he's going to do that, and uh, type thing. And yeah. That was what was neat about that fight. But the rest of the fights, the Inner Sphere won outright. Which meant the invasion was repudiated. And that meant well, they still kept their territory in the inner sphere. But now they were kind of no longer bound by the truce of Tukiid. But they also didn't have a reason to continue the invasion anymore. At least, Operation Revival. Things get interesting later on in the timeline. But with that, that is the Twilight of the Clans. Things are going to start getting a little bit interesting back in the Inner Sphere. Next week, I talk about the Federated Commonwealth Civil War. So until then, I'd like you all to remember, have fun, and keep gaming!